Hello everyone, and welcome back to Totally Broken Opinions. It's our spookiest episode yet, because we're not doing anything spooky, we're talking about Venom the Last Dance. That's spooky enough for me. It's aliens. Aliens, aliens. are spooky. Xenophage. Yeah. You know, some horror horror themes, I guess, are in this. Also, also this the scariest there. thing of all is we're both standing up. I can't say it's a we're not edition. sitting down. Yeah. So the vibe might be different. We the might get dance, very so puffed. We can, we can just start dancing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're having a little boogie. Whatever. What it, the vibes may be different. <laughs> so let us know in the comments if the vibes have changed because we're both standing up at our standing desk now. <laughs> It just means that all the blood goes to our feet, so we just talk more crap when it comes out of our head. It just means I'm going to get fucking tired. <laughs> exactly. I'm just going to be st- I'm just going to be standing here going, ah, oh, moving my feet about, and I'm just going to be getting tired because I can't stand still. That's the way I like sitting down on a chair because I can't sit down. I've noticed not, the same can, problem I can, I can, because mm. I, I wanted to get a standing desk at work, and then I got a standing desk at home, and I was like, I can't get a standing desk at work because I look like a right idiot. Yeah, you've just been moving the- around too much. <laughs> like I'm a fidgety person, I can't be doing I'll just that. Be- Constantly just standing like in those are steps. I don't want to be yeah, standing. I have to like, stand. I, I stand up a lot at work anyway, so and I'm just constantly. I can't stand in like one place too long, and it's a noise. I spelled that wrong. Let me change that. It doesn't matter in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. What were we talking about? Venom. Venom: The Last Dance is the third Venom movie and the fifth of the Sony try of. Um, I guess so. Yeah. Doing movies without Spider Man. Yeah, and so, I. Well, I really thought before this they were setting up for like Sinister Six, but but you yeah, know this is basically a goodbye, I guess. Yeah. By the way, full spoilers, full spoilers, because I can't be asked to do half-assed like non-spoilers as per every yeah. review we do. So spoiler in three, two, one. So Venom dies, and the guy in the bar doesn't. I yeah. stuck around for the end credits. Yeah, like an idiot. <laughs> the only person in the cinema. <laughs> I or am you say right, right uh, to the end. I I start right to the end. I watched the <laughs> final final end credit. Was I it worth the it? Two end cre- uh, it does potentially set up Venom returning. So I mean, there's a cockroach, but there- so basically, I'll tell you what it is because we're in full spoilers. So if you didn't like, this is the very end. So the guy from the bar, because he gets captured and taken to the base where they're harvesting Area 51 and all that. And after the destruction of Area 51 and the final climactic ending of the movie, the guy comes out of the cave and says, help, help, and then runs off. And then there's a cockroach and it goes up to a thing and it buzzes and the cockroach kind of looks like it's got some venom on it. Right. It's kind of difficult because it's a very short scene, but it, I sat through like 20 minutes of credits to get this on my own with no one else in the cinema <laughs> because everyone else left. <laughs> because I think after the first credit, everyone went, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, I don't care. I'm not sitting here for another 10, 10 minutes. And I was like, no, I have seen that there is a second credit scene and I am sad and I will sit here and watch it. <laughs> I didn't, yeah. I, yeah, it's a different experience <laughs> when there aren't other people there. <laughs> It's like those early days, I am, those bad people were like, oh shit, there's an end scene. Yeah, I think a lot of people have just gone, ah, oh, Marvel doesn't know what they're doing, and th- the end credits don't mean anything, so I'm not going to stick around. Because they're either a joke or they're just nothing now. Like, yeah, and there's no guarantee that anything... What it is anyway. Yeah, and there's also no guarantee that whatever it is is going to happen. Because, like, the four... four end credit is hercules and it's like oh okay whatever are they gonna do hercules at any point and know. the other one is Maybe. jane foster in heaven or valhalla so it's like yeah. okay cool and then, what what are these building to <laughs> they're not like teasing dr doom or anything like that they were teasing um kang kang and then this is also different completely different company doing it so what are they teasing there's no tease for craven no, because no. this is a pra- this is this whole universe is just completely separate from every other universe that Sony's doing. Because Madam Web is apparently a completely different universe. Morbius, who knows what the fuck's going on with that universe? I mean, and apparently, apparently Craven, what apparently Craven the- isn't even in this universe either. What? So who what? knows what's going on? Well, supposedly the next Spider-Man film is going to be another multiverse film. Yeah, but it's such a weird choice because they set him up to be a grounded hero in the last one after all the multiverse. So who knows what's going on at Sony and Marvel? I don't think anyone wants another multiverse film. I don't think Marvel wants Sony in their universe, considering that the beginning of this movie is them basically retconning the ending of Spider-Man No Way Home, where they basically go, hey, that alien goop that was in our universe? Nah, it turns out it wasn't in our universe. He got teleported back before that happened, and it went into the same bar in the same universe. He ain't in there. 
we're not doing Venom in... Like, that was the thing I was always wondering, is how they're going to do that, because the trailer showed that it was Chewie Otel Ijiofor grabbing it after he was in the bar, and Chewie Otel Ijiofor is Baron Mordo in Marvel's one. That's what I was going to say, so, yeah. So, But that's not a surprise. There are different... Ca- like, um, the, gu- the hippie guy is the same guy who plays um the lizard in Andrew Garfield's one. Is so it? So everyone was like, oh, yeah. So everyone was like, oh, and he's going to be the lizard again. It's like, no, he's just a random hippie that gives Tom Hardy some flip flop. <laughs> I will be honest, that was like my favorite my favorite gag of this uh the film. I love the shoe gag. <laughs> just kept losing his shoes. I just love that Tom Hardy throughout all of the Venom movies has looked like absolute dog shit. <laughs> He has, yeah. Like, he's never looked like he's just... Like, the only moment in these movies is him wearing a suit in the last one, and he still looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's sweating, he's just tired, he looks just absolute shit. And I, I just love the fact that it's just like, yeah, no, he's just a slob. And he dresses up nice, but he's still a piece of... Like, he's just still, like, fucked. It's just nice. Anyway, what are your overall thoughts on this movie? I would say this film is a... It kind of ends the franchise as it is. And what I mean by that is like it, it's kind of the same vibes as the other films. There's nothing different, really. Like, it's still getting carried by Tom Hardy's charisma. And Venom. <laughs> Venom. Like, his, his double Karenum. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's basically the whole personality of the film. Without Tom Hardy and without his performance, this film definitely falls flat on his face. Yeah, it's very bog standard. It's nothing special. It's just Tom Hardy having the time, having fun with this character. And it's a real shame that it's just in this pocket where they, he doesn't have anything to really go against except just a goop monster for most yeah. of it. I thought there were going to be way more goop monsters. And there were. It was at the end. and It was a big I old goop monster fest. It was, and I kind of liked on how kind of overpowered the Xenophage was. That it definitely yeah. felt towards the just end. Just a big like, shredder. There is nothing. Like, nothing can. Every time you kill it, it just come back to life again. Yeah, there was just a big shredder that had immortality. <laughs> Basically, yeah, and I do now feel like a lot of those symbiotes just died for no reason. Yeah, I, the 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 cop one just gets kind of like suddenly turns to be a good guy and then just protects Venom and whatnot. And I I, I think my big problem. Like, I enjoyed this movie, don't get me wrong. I think my big problem was it was just kind of like, yeah, okay, there weren't any twists that I saw, like, didn't see coming, or I felt it was very paint by numbers. You could basically tell that, oh, yeah, Venom's going to run into this family of hippies, and then, oh, the family's going to go back to Area 51. Oh, they're going to break in, and then Tom Hardy's going to have to protect this family, and all of those sort of beat and things. Oh, the scientist lady, oh, she's going to become good and whatnot, and Chewie Atelier Jafford's going to have a, like, reconsideration after his troubled problems and all of that. Like, it's very... There wasn't any twist. Like, I was kind of expecting the... If I had to say something that I thought would maybe happen was the, um, the scientist lady, the blonde one, was going to probably, like, seemed kind of, like... Th- they set up... This this weird thing where like her brother died in a thunderstorm or something and then you're like oh what's this gonna build to and then it's just she gets alien goop and becomes a symbiote that's just quick and you're like oh yeah okay well the her I mean, design is very similar to scream i think she's meant to be scream yeah or she's meant to be i think i can't remember which one she's meant to be there's so many different fucking variations of um uh symbiote uh so... I say, scream is normally a very different color because it's normally like orangey red oh crazy the the the, hair the other similar. scientist lady's name was sadie christmas <laughs> yeah makes sense yeah i liked her character she didn't do a lot until like the very end and then she just became like tom hardy's best friend <laughs> I, that that was the thing. I was like, oh, this ca- like this character is kind of set up to be um, kind of like the curious one about the symbiotes. Yeah, like she seems to have the connection of like, oh, they're kind of cool. And then I I didn't expect I expected her to not have venom on her. I I expected a, another symbiote. I think she would have just let a symbiote, and then venom would have Tom Hardy would have run away. They would have had to break venom out. Not she just had venom on her. I thought that was going to be the thing. She was just going to have a. She was just going to be revealed to have a symbiote on her that wasn't Venom, and then it would have put more tension onto him having to run away. Get so I don't know. I think uh, my complaint from the visual point of view, and it's kind of the same for all the Venom films, which is that it's always set dark at night, and it doesn't Venom help. Venom is black. 
Yeah, red and black. <laughs> and also, a lot of these other symbiotes, like, they have actually more interesting colors, a more differential. Oh, yeah, but there's, like, a light can, blue, a purple. You can't tell it that much in the, in the setting of the film. Like, it would have been yeah. nice to have it a bit more lighter, then you can actually see more light reflecting off them. And But I guess that's, you know, budget requirements. That's usually the main reason why they have a set. I think it's light. also very difficult to make, like, goo look good in light. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I fully... Uh, and I'm more aware of that. It's just a shame. It's, it's like, like a... I think I think texture. I think that's why most things where like it's heavy intensity for CGI budget is at night because you can hide a lot of the flaws behind the darkness and the shading and that. Whereas if you do it in light, you have to have it look good or otherwise it looks really. That's why like any sort of like movie where they do facial stuff, um, like deep faking and stuff like that, is tends to be in a dark sort of setting unless they really want to try and show it off, like in Star Wars where they try and do Luke Skywalker rock in the daytime and it's like no it doesn't look good (laughs) just looks like a fucking potato smashed in with some eyeballs and you're like okay don't like this yeah yeah, um but it is what it is no i agree it's kind of like i think the i think i don't think this good this film hasn't got anything different for me than the other films in the sense of like yes it is like an ending and it's quite a nice tribute i think to the the venom franchise um Imagine if it was a send off to all of Sony's franchises. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if they just had like a, a snapshot of like Madam Web and Morbius in that that, that the mon- little montage of goodbye. Just like yeah, we're not that, doing this uh, effort Fox again. <laughs> well, yeah. Deadpool did for Fox. To be fair, I really like that. That, yeah. was a, that was a really nice. Thing, yeah, but. it's weird that two movies this year have had send offs to franchise. Also, a lot of movies this year have had dancing in it and singing. That's true. Yeah. I'm also glad that Venom has ended now. I think it is in a good place to end. I it, think they'll bring him back. I, I, Marvel. I, I would be happy with the character coming back, but I think it's a fitting end to having Venom films. They've tried it now enough, and it. I just don't think it works having Venom as a I think they've realized that without Spider-Man, they can't do anything. <laughs> like you can have him as an anti-hero, but you still kind of need Spider-Man alongside of it. I mean, even the whole Venom, like, Venom's meant to have the Spider-Man logo across his chest. That's like the big thing yeah. of Venom. Like, you, you, you never I've get not that. really cared that much about that not being in the movies because I'm like, eh, it's okay. It doesn't look... I, it, it just makes him look like a blob with some white tender, tendrils. Yeah, but that's I, the trouble. Like, you need to have a bit more of that definition, like that that big thing. Oh, yeah. I understand why, but it doesn't it doesn't irk me the wrong way like a lot of people. Like, I never... I've never really... Like, I've never looked for the spider every time I've seen him, like, in full Venom. Don't get me wrong. I so don't I'm think... Like, it's only something I've noticed after playing the Spider-Man 2 games, and it, there's like a massive contrast to that Venom in that game. Compared oh yeah, to he's a lot one. more black and white than he is just black with white, like, little... Yeah, pieces. and even how the character is, it, it it's a lot more menacing. I mean, the one in the Spider-Man 2 is a full antagonist. Like, there's no part of it as anti-hero. And I, no. yeah, I, I guess that's kind of the I don't know, big I haven't problem. played the game. <laughs> that's the big problem with having a Venom film is that you don't you still Eddie Brock is never a bad guy in the franchise not really I mean he only kills he one kills person. that military person and he gets a little one bit upset even though he's perfectly fine with letting Venom eat a guy like a bunch of criminals heads yeah. who are doing a dro- dog ring dog fighting ring I did like that fight I do love. I just. I do like the fact that Eddie just is shoeless for most of this movie, or just wearing shit it's shoes. So funny. Just, I love just it. Have other people's shoes. It's just like, oh yeah, no, just throughout the movie. I was, like, I was <laughs> half expecting him to turn up in New York and just like no f- shoes. That would have been funny. Mm. But yeah, so the 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 the, the basic pr- premise of this movie is that Venom and. Uh, Eddie go back to their universe after their little trip to the MCU and then they're immediately on the run again because of the events. Apparently it's all taken place in a year. All of the Venom franchise has taken place over a year. Yeah. Um, that's mentioned. And then so they're like, okay, somehow, despite being a wanted criminal across America, New York City <laughs> yeah. is where we're going to go. <laughs> so we got to go from one side of America to the other side of America. And... It's also this whole thing about the codex as well. Um, I didn't mind that. I thought that was a nice little retcon because it's like, oh no, perfect symbiosis between host and symbiote creates. Well, no, but no, a... it's, it's when he dies, that's the point. It, well, oh, it, yeah, it goes away. No, 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 it's he needs to die to get it. That was what yeah. the plot was. So because Eddie died, and then basically in the Venom, first one, 
Venom resurrected him. That's what created the Codex. Yeah, but I also think it has to be like between a host that is a match. Yeah, but it's not. I think I, I don't think you can matches. create. I don't think you can create the Codex if it's a person who isn't a match because you'd just be eating them because you kill them anyway. So you could resurrect them if that was the case. Yeah, anyway, that, that's how they explain it. Because a symbiote, a symbiote think, that yeah, I like that little retcon. I don't know, for me, I, it, I, didn't, it didn't quite hit very. Right. I think it, it's, it's just a MacGuffin to get yeah, the bad it. guy. That's it just, it's just it's just it's just it's just the it's just the plot point, and I like that it just co- for budget reasons it means that Venom can't be out all the time because yeah, it's only when that was obvious they're in more and, yeah, and they just it's because Tom Hardy showed more. I, in the second one, they just had it so Venom was a separate separate character almost. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's basically that as he's running around, he can't have Venom out because one, Venom is scared of the Shredder thing and um, the it only happens, the, the what's it called? Codex. The key? Codex. The codex only exists when Venom and Eddie are in full transformation and they're both perfectly like synced as one being, basically. Um, which is a nice, nice little thing. Uh, Andy Circus is Null, who is our big guy with a sword who just sits on a chair covered in goop for most of the movie. Oh, it's Andy Circus. Andy Circus yeah, is all Andy... like... Well, he he's directed the other two, didn't he? The first two films. He did two, and then this is probably a little nod to him. Also, he's just a voice actor, so... Well, he, he, does, he does a lot of things, Andy Serkis, doesn't he? He's, he's, well, he's, he's, uh... he's, he's Snoke, another character that is sitting in a chair and then probably dies. He was also that the, was the um, uh, Vibranium Trader in the uh, Marvel films. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. He's in a lot of stuff. He's Gollum. Yeah, yes, he is. He's also the Caesar in the Planet of the Apes movies. Let's go through every single movie Andy Serkis <laughs> has been in. That sounds like a great that podcast be... episode. So interesting. Yeah. He's in a lot of stuff. What a what a fascinating career he's had. Uh, he's Would... also <laughs> he's also Alfred in the Batman. Would you like to see Venom return in some shape or form to fight I Tom Holland? I really Batman? like Tom Harley. I don't know if I want him to fight Tom Holland's. I think I'd like him to fight Andrew Garfield's more because I feel like he fits more into the like... Andrew Garfield. Tom Hardy's Venom can. I feel like he's too much of a good guy. He doesn't do that many bad things. Like, he just kills bad I things. think it would be better... I think I'd like a team-up between Andrew Garfield's and Tom... Ho- uh, not... Uh, and Eddie Brock's. Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock. I think that would be better. Because it's too... Because de- where we left Andrew Garfield in No Way Home is he was kind of anti-hero. Because yeah. he's he's not been pulling his punches. He's been a bit more angry after Gwen Stacy's died. And it's him... I think after that point where he's kind of rectifying himself, he's trying to be better. So I think having him and Tom Hardy's character, who are both like not the beacons of like hope. Tom, like Andrew Garfield's is probably more of a beacon of hope than Venom is. But I think those two like rectifying their pasts together because uh, Tom Hardy lost his love of his life because he fucked it up and she didn't die, but she moved on and he isn't with her. And Andrew Garfield lost his love of the life by her dying. And it was his his fault in his mind. And like, like I think there's a I think there's a decent bromance that you could make from those having a freeway with a bromance because you got <laughs> Venom and like, imagine that fuck fest <laughs> <laughs> no i think if they i don't i mean i could be wrong but i feel like if they do it in the mcu they might do agent venom instead oh yeah but i don't know what who they're gonna do because the flash and that i don't i don't know if i'd be like eh, okay yeah i don't think that guy's gonna be any good i don't think we've got an eddie brock in the mcu no I th- well because agent venom's flash thompson isn't it yeah we don't have a harry yet either so we can't no. do harry they could do also, um you don't want to no but they could do hobgoblin they could do Hobgoblin with Ned, yeah. But that's not Venom, is it? No, it's not. But I think Hobgoblin still will be good, though. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think I think they've got some interesting stories. But if they want to do a multiverse, like people keep saying they want to do, I'm like, oh, fuck off. Fucking shit, stop it. <laughs> Just let Tom Holland do some normal crime fighting. <laughs> To be fair, he's not under contract anymore. He doesn't have to do any. I think he's under one, because I think he's still got the... MC- I think in terms of his contract, I think he's got one Avengers film. Right. I think that's his contract, because I think when they renegotiated, it was for one more movie, which was No Way Home, and one more um, team-up movie. Yeah. So I think, like, one Avengers movie or something like that, because I think at the time they were 
probably going to have Tom Holland step away and go back to Sony's universe. And then they were probably going to have a Spider-Man for Sony's universe. But I think then Sony's universes have all fallen apart. So <laughs> who knows? Yeah, Sony um, just cannot keep a franchise together to save their lives. No, they can keep Spider-Verse, even though that's been delayed. Because they keep exactly. trying to get the people to use AI or stuff like that. <laughs> who knows? They keep trying to touch it. And it's like, no, leave it alone. Stop it. Just let them do their magic. You don't need to be involved. Just put your name on it at the end. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Just leave it alone. <laughs> Don't touch it. Also, the um, Sony is partially responsible for the boys. So, I mean, they can do superhero stuff. <laughs> Although saying that the boys wasn't great last time. Mm, we'll see. I liked, I liked season four. I know you weren't that fussed because you, got, you thought it was too woke or too... I didn't say that. <laughs> Anti, uh, it's, it's whatever the opposite of woke is, no one knows that nonsense. But yeah, I think I think there's there's definitely potential for another Venom movie if they wanted to do it because this does set up a a null return in this post credit. It's like, nope, I'm gonna get them. Also, if that cockroach is correct, then maybe there is another Venom in the future because they do set up that cockroaches can survive anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Venom might have been on that cockroach. I don't know. I kind of tuned out because I was like, fuck this. <laughs> Do I don't you, like um, waiting 10, 20 minutes for an end credit scene. What did you think of all the Venom animal takeovers? Oh, what, in the credits? No, like in the... Uh, oh, the when they're fighting on the, the horse, river. Yeah. Then the, uh, the, yeah. the frog as well, then the fish. I like all that. That's always fun. Yeah, It's always like... just fun to see what Venom... The piranha the fish. Or... And then he eats another fish and he gets bigger, leading to what happens at the end where he gets big because he consumes he all of the... all the xenophages. Well, no, he doesn't absorb them. He kind of traps them in him and then he gets acid poured on him and then dies. And then he picks up the guy and makes him push the button again and dies. Or doesn't die. Who knows? Ooh, who knows? Ooh. I did like that. I did like that. I think that was a fitting send-off. Although, not fire and not sound. So, is Venom weak to acid? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, who who would have thought? You know, you have an idea. Maybe he's still alive. Maybe that's why he did it because he knew he was immune to acid and he just wanted to kill those fucking aliens. I think another big problem for me for this whole Venom franchise, as much as I do enjoy it, I think Venom is, is there too wasn't much enough of a, Mrs. Uh, Chen. Yeah, that's true. I did, I did enjoy it, but it's just that I think Venom's too jokey. Like, as much as I do yeah. enjoy it, but like as but for Venom is like a, uh, and I think this one even more so. He's like he's like fully just a. Uh, well, Venom is meant to be the comedic relief. Tom Hardy is meant to be the straight man. So yeah, but I would feel like it probably should be the other way around. No, I think the fish out of water for Venom is probably the why they did it. Because it's the, he doesn't know everything and that's why. And Tom Hardy's just trying to live and he has to deal with all the ramifications. Like, it's like when you're drunk. It's like, oh, it's, it's, it's the sober me's problem. Venom is just drunk Tom Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> so every time they swap uh, or like go full Venom, it's like, ah, oh, I'll deal with the ramifications next time. But for now, I'm just going to eat this guy's head. I do I feel like they should have been already. We've got three films out of this. Would you say it should have been R-rated? I think it should have been mo- like more gory. Yeah, I mean, it was not... R-rated, so you might as well. Like... Yeah, it's, a, well, 15 here, R-rated in America. No, R-rated is 15. Yeah, I know, but it's R-rated, yeah. Our, our, our rating is a 15, which is just yeah. like... I always thought R-rating in America just meant 18 plus, and then I didn't... For years, and then it was just only, re- like, a couple years ago that I realized that R-rating was just 15. Yeah. And I was like, oh, why the fuck do Americans make such a big deal about it being R-rated then? <laughs> Yeah, they they do, but yeah, it's uh, not big. It's not actually that big a thing. Nah, this is just uh oh, fifteen year olds plus can only watch it. Who gives a shit? Like eighteen would have been much better. So that just means fucking Craven's just gonna be fifteen plus, which is just not interesting. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I mean, it's not gonna be like, tied down at least. Oh yeah, I feel like Craven's still gonna be better than Madam Web. I hope so. Cause I, I like I like Aaron Taylor Johnson. I hope he does become Bond because I think he's a good choice. True and. After playing the Spider-Man games, Craven's a, I think Craven's quite an interesting character because he's I not, know much about Craven. All I know is he wears a big lion's mask on his chest. He's not that much of a villain in the sense, well, at least from the Spider-Man games. That well, he's a poacher, products. Dan. Yeah, in, in the just, real, he kills animals for fun, Dan. So if that's your type good... of hero, then I don't want to associate with you anymore. <laughs> Put your middle finger <laughs> up on me just because the audience can't see you, you piece of shit. Uh, no. How yeah. dare you? Saying... Yeah, so... You were saying how much you love Craven. 
I was saying Craven, I think, could play the role of an anti-hero a bit better than Venom. In the sense of Craven in Spider-Man 2, for example, will actively go after all the bad guys and try to kill them all. And that's his whole yeah, thing, and playing games with them. But then well, his whole thing is he wants to be the best hunter in the world, isn't it? Yeah, and he wants to just capture, like, to defeat the most the beast, the biggest beast. Which is Spider-Man to him. Uh, well, no, it wasn't Spider-Man in the games, actually, in Spider-Man 2. Well, it was Venom, uh, wasn't it? It was Venom, yeah. And then Venom kills him, from what I've seen. Yeah, I think so. I can't remember. Spoilers for the game! <laughs> <laughs> hey, the game's only just come out on PC. Oh, no, I think not even on PC yet. No. Well, sucks to be you if you didn't play it on PlayStation. The I'm best January platform. Something. Owned by Sony! <laughs> oh my god! Let's chill for Sony so we can get theatrical tickets to Craven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, red carpet for totally broken opinions. <laughs> I'd love that. If we could, can, can we get people in the comments to tweet at Sony on a dying platform known as X? Yeah, uh, give, 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 us, give us free tickets. I mean, I go for it, yeah? We'll give a good review. I already get free tickets, but I, I pay for them <laughs> in advance. <technically. laughs> it's called a subscription service for cinema tickets. Yeah, also, it looks like this film is getting probably about the same amount of love slash hate as the previous films. I wouldn't say oh, yeah. it's... It's, it's critics hate it, and audiences are happy with it because it's just fun. Uh, yeah, and that's that's the big thing about this film. It's, I wouldn't say it necessarily was a good film. I wouldn't tell anyone to well, watch it. Well, it's like it the if... first one. The first one exactly. was it's the exact same as every reviewed other by Venom critics. Film. But it just teaches that spot where it's just funny. It's just a fun... It's like Deadpool, like free. Like, I didn't love Deadpool 3. I thought it was fine, but it was fun. That's all it needed to be for me. It was a fun movie. I don't think it was a cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, and but to be fair, Deadpool I, I had 3 was... Time with it. Deadpool 3 is always marketed as a comedy. It was never marketed as anything else. If anyone went in, if anyone went into watching Deadpool 3 or even Venom 3 expecting something else, like that's the yeah, it's like, that's it's like I think it's why Joker did so badly because people were expecting it to be something else and then it was completely different and people were like, oh, I don't like that. Whereas these have just marketed themselves as just fun movies. Whereas that's Joker what they want. And people, people are up for those. I mean, at the moment, like, the actual world is depressing as fuck. We're coming up to an election in America. Woo! Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, w- I would just genuinely say, like, people nowadays would rather just go watch a film like this than go watch, like, a cinematic masterpiece of, like, I don't know, some depressing thing in the world. Hey, look, Dune 2 did pretty well, so... But it didn't do bangers. It, it did, like... I can't remember what Dune 2 got. I think Dune 2 was sitting at, like, maybe 600 million? Ah, oh, 740 million. There we go. So, did pretty well for a $190 million budget. Yeah, but it's not the best this year, is it? I mean, Dune... Well, no, it's not... But that's a pretty... For a movie, the, the first one came out on streaming... And then this is a sequel that is to a book series that is very, very, very long. And to get pretty much universal acclaim from both like audiences and critics is very rare nowadays. But the, the four films are better than Dune 2 was Inside Out 2, Deadpool and Wolverine, Despicable Me 4. Oh, I'm not talking about like, yeah, but those those movies were always they're the fourth, third and second movie of like a tr- like a, a, an established franchise. This is the second movie for a movie that came out on streaming <laughs> in a true, pandemic. Anyone, anyone who's watched the first Dune would have watched the second one the- because of how pe- yeah, I think genuinely the, the first one was like such a good quality film. Oh, yeah. uh, it made people want to go see the second one. I know a lot of people who didn't like the first one and then loved the second one. And we're going to not watch the second one until everyone who watched the second one went, no, get over yourself, watch it. <laughs> the second one, I would say, is much better than the first one. Oh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I think the second one is way better than the first one. But I think the first one is also really good. <laughs> Yeah. Whereas I think Venom, for me at least, probably has been first, second, third, but not by much. Maybe yeah, like it's not, it's not much difference. Like they're all kind of the same film. Yeah, they're just and Tom the, Hardy. And to be fair, they are designed to be watched like that. Clearly, because it says everything happens in the same year, so they're designed to be watched one after the other. Yeah, it's basically back to back. Yeah. Okay. So I've got Wikipedia's description of the end credit scene. Um, a panicked bartender escapes the burned remains of Area 51 as a black cockroach crawls from the rubble next to a broken vial that previously contained a sample of the Venom symbiote. Ooh. Because that's the thing. As long as a bit of venom survives, then it's fine. That's true. That's how they kind of reproduce, isn't it? Or something. Along those lines. Yeah. And they all have a hive uh, mind, don't they? So they can kind of... Yeah. I mean, that's how they're all talking to each other through solid glass. Yeah. Um. What do you think about the action in this movie? Because we, we mentioned that the, we got the running through a waterfall action sequence. 
We got the end yeah. action sequence, and we got the a skip. I don't know. I don't, no, they don't even. That's not really an action sequence for when he gets stuck in Las Vegas. I was going to say. I think it's, I think it's lacking a little bit. The the, the action in this film. Uh, I think I quite enjoyed the first one where he's kind of dealing with the uh, what they called um the dog dog people. Dog people. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was dog I, fighting. I, I quite enjoyed people. that one, and that was probably my favorite one out of all of them. And I. My feeling is that's when Venom is best, when it's not having to do massive CGI fight scenes and it's taken on like... When he's not a big blob fighting another big blob. Yeah, and I think that's when it does it the best. Um, The Xenophages, I love the sort of shredding effect. Yeah, when they just eat a guy and then it comes out the back of their neck. Yeah, and I I think that looks really cool. And I think the Xenophages in general, they were done very well, like very menacing. You could tell it was... I mean, don't get me wrong, you can kind of see where the plot was going. But if you didn't know where the plot was going, you can see how they would be terrifying. That you wouldn't you wouldn't want to go up against well, yeah. one. Because they basically established that it falls off a plane. Uh, no, it gets shredded by a plane engine. Which, we don't ever know what happens to that plane. No. That plane is just probably all of those passengers are just dead. I mean, they might not be. Because, well, it was a plane going to New York, so we might have had another 9-11 on our hands. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, they were over Nevada. Or they were over near Las Vegas, so I don't think it was going to get that far, but who knows. Uh, what do you make of closing Area 51? I mean, I like the fact that they reference that tourists are just sad cunts who try and get into <laughs> it all the time. Like, I, I don't mind. I, I've, I think Area 51 is just a fascinating thing because it's just such a weird choice to build an army base in the middle of a desert and then essentially just keep um, people thinking that it's aliens. Yeah, and if I, I came with the idea, I was like, what if the government tried to get everyone thinking like that to hide something much worse? Oh, yeah, we've probably got mole people. Who yeah. fucking cares about space? It's mole people that are probably down there. Yeah. So it's let's talk about box office, because do you think this movie is going to break even? Because it's currently, its budget was $120 million, roughly, and it's currently made $175 million. Oh, well. So As of time of money. recording. No, because you've got to double that for marketing. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think it will. It's, yeah. Um, but it's whether or not... Because what did the Freedom's last movie... has got movies... enough love. And people will watch it. I don't know. A lot of people are tired of... Yeah, but I think that's also a reason that people don't go and watch these things. Um... Let's have a look. See, Venom made Venom two made five hundred and six on a hundred and ten million, and Venom one I think made like seven hundred. Uh, like seven hundred, eight hundred. Yeah, eight hundred and fifty six on doesn't say the original, but I think it was around. Well, opening weekend, what one seventy five? Normally is half that the second weekend, so the seventy five million makes it. Yeah, a hundred. It'll probably make about 300 million, maybe total. Maybe 400. Oh, yeah. I, I think it will make his money, and I think they're probably just sunsetting this. Uh, yeah, so 100, 100 million to 116 million was the first budget. So they have basically had the same budget, maybe give or take 10 million each time. So, I mean, if they can make roughly 400, I reckon they'll do pretty good. Yeah, and I don't think they'll really care as long as they get their money back. No. Because the last one. And also, so. it's doing much better than Madam Web or Morbius. So. Oh, that's not fucking hard, is it? Well, yeah, but if you're looking at what they had previously, they had a budget of 100 million to 80 million for um, Madam Web, and it made 100 million. So they lost about 100 million from marketing. <laughs> Well, and I would Morbius. say, oh, go on, yeah. Hang on, now you go on because I'm just finding. I was, was going to say, I would say that probably all the Sony films of this franchise. Wow, Morbius made more money than Madam Web. That's crazy. yeah, I did. I would say all of them probably have on like on par writing or like actual uh... quality of film. And then it's probably just Venom that actually has a charismatic personality like Tom Hardy to so just carry it. Like the actual quality. I of writing maintain of that if Dakota actually... Johnson was actually interested in the movie, she would have put in a better performance. Probably so. And Morbius, <laughs> Jared Leto. I think if they not tried to trick her into thinking she was part of the MCU and in an actual Marvel movie, she would have been a bit more happy. Morbius annoys me because they had, they had two great actors with the roles of Morbius, but they got them the wrong way fucking round. What, Matt Smith? With Matt Smith and Jared Leto. Because it would have no, Jared Leto so should have just been put in a bin. Jared Leto should have just been just been a bat. But Matt he Smith should have been a voice so cameo much better. Bat. Matt Smith would have been so much better as Morbius' character. Also, another movie with a dance scene in it. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, do you not agree that <sighs> Matt Smith would have been so much better? Uh, Probably. I don't know Matt Smith enough, well, acting-wise, because everything he, he's in, I don't really care that much about. <laughs> he he can. He, he never does well in films, but TV shows, he, 
He seems well, in films, easy. apparently, like all it, all of his villainous roles, he does shit. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, he's not a good villain apart from uh, in House uh, of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. Apparently, he's a really good villain in that. But that's TV. So that's TV. Yeah, because <laughs> much better. Because I think Matt Smith was meant to be in uh, Rise of Skywalker as young Palpatine, and then that got canned, and they brought back original Palpatine, and then he was the bad guy in Terminator Genesis. Or one of, one of the Terminator movies, and he apparently was a bad villain in that, and then he was a bad villain in Morbius, and then yeah, so I think he just does a bad villain, which is why also, he would have been good at Morbius. Yeah, but you can blame Karen Gillan for that because she talked him into doing Morbius. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She, she was so happy with like Marvel, and then it was just like, oh yeah, I should probably do a Marvel movie, and then Sony comes in and goes, hey Matt Smith, do you want to do Morbius? <laughs> And it's like, oh, what is that? Oh, that sounded kind of shit. Oh, it's Marvel? Okay, I'll give that a go. <laughs> I mean, I, the thing is, I don't know why Matt Smith doesn't do... Oh, no, he is a good villain in um Last Night in Soho. Yeah. But I don't know why Matt Smith doesn't do well in villain roles, because he looks creepy as fuck. He looks like a villain. Yeah, he looks that. like he should be able to do quite good, but I think it's fair. I think he's just had poor writing as well. Yeah, he's got a bad yeah. agent. Uh, they have not necessarily been actually good films. <laughs> no, I'm looking at his thing and it doesn't look great. He really is only known for Doctor Who, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. He, sh- he should never have left. Oh well. Ooh. Anyway, um, but yeah, I overall, I'll probably give it like a seven. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say seven. I like how we arbitrarily every now and again give a rating and we actually give a number. <laughs> like, we we just occasionally just go, oh, yeah, I guess we should give it a number. Let's just give it a number. Yeah, I think I'll give it like six and a half, probably. Um, Yeah, I, I liked it. I don't think it's amazing. I think I'll probably watch it again at some point, but... I'd when watch I it again re-watch. when I'm binge watching all the Venoms again. Like I think my determination is how soon would I watch it, watch it again? And it's like never gonna watch it again. I'll watch it uh, when I'm bored and there's nothing else on that I'm really interested in because it's just kind of a time waster movie. I'll watch it again because I'm interested, and then I will watch it repeatedly multiple times in the cinema because I really really enjoyed it. <laughs> For me, is I will watch it in a couple years when I want to revisit the Venom franchise and I'll watch them all back to back. And then maybe Sony will have a streaming service by then. Cause Fuck everyone... me. <laughs> I still, I'm still can. surprised. I'm still surprised Sony doesn't just make a streaming service and just tie like Crunchyroll and I all the Sony PlayStation. <laughs> don't no, but if they if they tied PlayStation Plus to it and tied Crunchyroll and then all of their box office of like movies, I reckon that would be like a decent value for money. I mean, probably would be. Right, they just charge like a ridiculously low amount or decent amount and then just charge everyone every year more money, which they're doing with PlayStation Plus anyway. <laughs> What's like £100 a year now or something? Oh, it's way more than £100. That's like, not about £100. <laughs> nah, it's about 100 But there are other tiers, Dan, so you can pay more. I got the... Not the I got the middle one. of the road one. I did originally have the highest tier. Yeah. And then I just realized the only difference is it's the old games. And I'm like, mm, well, I don't really care that much. But then they added Time Splitters 2 and 1. And I'm like, oh, damn it. Now I want to do that. But I can just pay for them. It doesn't matter too much. Anyway, yeah. thank you for listening to this Venom The Last Dance review discussion. Depends on what I put in the title. I mean, solos are reviews and discussions as doubles. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed um, our standing up personalities. Yeah. Let us know. I'm assuming I've walked away from the microphone too much. Because <laughs> I saw a couple oh, yeah, times me too, my mic- <laughs> I saw my microphone like lines go a bit down, so I need to get better at that. Um but yeah, ultimately, it was a fun movie. I think we said that already. Who knows? <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Next <laughs> Let's week go to bed. <laughs> is Agatha all along. Ooh. Should be good that one. And then the penguin. And then depending on when Arcane comes out, either the week after or the week after. A week at some point soon. Yes. And yes, we've got many, many thoughts on many of those things, even though neither of us have started watching the penguin yet. It's too much money, and now TV shite. So yeah, bear with us. <laughs> and we don't have we, neither of us own Sky, and neither of us own Max because it's America, and we're in the UK. Yeah. Although I did have Max, I had um, HBO at one point because I used a VPN, and then they blocked VPN usage because I couldn't sign up again. Because that's how I watched the first season of Harley Quinn. Oh, is it? Yeah, I'm I've yeah. seen Harley Quinn for ages. I think I'm like two yeah, years behind yeah, or good. something. I don't know. I like the last season. I want to watch Kite Man. Oh, yeah, can't man. Which apparently is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it. Yeah, well, we got Penguin as our next DC thing. So. All right, but next week is Agatha. 
I got Bye. Goodbye. It was Venom's last dance. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs>